everybody, I'm Kimberly Edwards from cookingwithkimberly.com and today I'm going to show you a super cool recipe, one that I'm ex experimenting with. I've made freezer jams of many varieties before, but I've never ventured into grapes. And today I'm going to use grapes and I'm just using grapes that I get like from my grocery store. They're not even off my vine because it, I wanted seedless ones. I don't want to have to seed them. Negative. So I'm using seedless grapes just like this. And freezer jam only takes a very few ingredients. It takes the grapes. It, or, or whatever kind of fruit you're using. It takes pectin, you can use liquid or you can use the dried form as long as it's for the particular kind of jam that you're using. I'm making freezer jam today and I can use this for that. You need some lemon juice for most fruits and you need a bunch of sugar, so be ready with that. Right now, what I did was we washed, we stemmed, we picked them all off, we quartered these bad boys, and now I'm going to just try and mash them a little further. Use a potato masher or whatever kind of masher you have. Use it by hand if you have to. Squish it through a strain or whatever you gotta do. I still want chunks. I wanna maintain some of the integrity of the fruit. I love chunks in my jam. Um, I don't want this to be a jelly. If I was wanted it to be a jelly, I would use ju just juice. So grape juice or apple juice or whatever kind of fruit that you're using. So this is going to be a jam. Now I'm going to mesh these up just a little bit more and then I'm going to add a couple things and let it sit for a while, about 30 minutes. I'm going to let the grapes sit with some lemon juice and the sugar. I'm not putting the pectin in yet. I just want that to macerate more, to get some more of the juices, marry all those ingredients a little bit better before I put the pectin in and get them into the jars. Now my jars have been sterilized. I threw them in through the sterilization um, cycle in my dishwasher. They are hot and steamy and ready to go. So we need to get ready to go. So I'm going to mash these just a little bit more. And so we'll these are all mashed up, okay? And it's exactly, well, just a tiny, tiny, like this much more than I need. But I'm going to use it all anyway. So into my bowl so that I can mix everything up. It goes all my fruit. This is about four and a half cups of fruit, so we're just gonna, you know, kind of eyeball it a little bit, just a tiny bit. Now, I'm going to use some lemon juice. Don't use real lemon juice, okay? I just find, and you'll read it online as well, or wherever you're reading, that the lemon juice that's prepared in these bottles that, you, that are sold at the grocery store is the kind of juice that you need to use for jam, okay? Now, if you wanted to use the, the ripe lemons freshly squeezed, I know it sounds like a really great sentiment and all, just doesn't work the same. I don't know why, but that's what's up. So to this four and a half cups, I'm adding two tablespoons of this lemon juice and maybe just a bit, tiny bit more because I had a little bit more. Next is the sugar. I'm going to measure out eight cups of sugar. I know it seems like a lot, but this is what's keeping it. You're not actually going to be processing this jam, this is going to be put into jars and put straight into your freezer, and that's how it's going to keep. What keeps it is the sugar, okay? The sugar keeps it from going bad, and then it just goes in the fridge after. So you're not doing all that sealing and ster uh, sterilization and all that stuff. So that's eight cups of sugar, and I'm going to stir all this around so that it can sit and marry each other and get all ready to go. Stir it through very nicely. Now this is going to macerate the grapes. This is going to um, cause the grapes to release a lot of their juice, which is exactly what we want. For more information on macerating fruit, you can check out my uh, show on that, how to macerate whatever it was I was macerating. I'll put it on the bottom of the screen for you right now. Okay. So this is going to sit, I'm setting the timer for 30 minutes, and you'll see me that. Okay, the grapes have been sitting here for about 30 minutes with this sugar, I'm just going to stir it through again. And I'm going to add the pectin now. On your instructions for your pectin, depending on what kind of fruit you're using and depending on what kind of pectin you're using, it's going to tell you how long to stir in that pectin. Now for this particular recipe, I'm going to go about three minutes. It doesn't say exactly what I want in here. I have to, I'm guessing at this recipe, they can't provide you every single fruit on the planet and tell you how to do it in a little package. So. I'm just going to go along with what I know. I'm going to put this pectin in and I'm going to stir it for three minutes um, eat, uh, three minutes total. I'm actually going to set my uh, timer on my stove because, you know, I'm not going to count for three minutes and that way you don't have to worry about it. So get this in here. You can, again, you can use the liquid kind. There's a powdered kind. 
You just have to follow the manufacturer's instructions. Tonight I'm using Bernardin. Um, it's a Canadian brand. And uh, this is per usually what we use, uh, or we use Serto. So this is the thickener. This is the thing that's going to uh, make it thick like jam, you know? It's coat the back of a spoon, so to speak. All right, it's in there, it's not stirred though. Set you your time, make sure that that's evenly stirred in because that pectin can have chunks in it and then it's not going to work properly, right? You need all that pectin to get this to gel the way you want it to. So make sure that it's broken up and it's in there and it's completely um, coating everything, right? That looks pretty good. Okay, grab yourself a big ladle and let's get our jars organized. So we're gonna see how this works. Um, we're filling these skinnier neck ones. The other ones, there's a handy dandy tool that will fit in some of the jars if you're using mason jars and larger mouth ones. But the smaller ones, they won't fit that, okay? So you have to do that by hand. And you can use the little plastic ones that are from the, the um, jar companies now as well. Uh, but this is freezer jam. This, again, this is not going to be sterilized. This isn't just going in your pantry. It's going in your freezer. So as opposed to sealing them and doing them really proper in the proper mason jars and stuff, you want to make sure that these are nice and sterilized, but you don't have to worry about the type of jar. See, I'm using old um, olive jar. I'm using an old jam jar we had from somebody else. And you can use those. Keep the tops. And these work perfectly for freezer jam because they don't have to be sealed. It's just going to be in the fridge or the freezer, so you're good to go. Okay? Now stir this up really, really nicely before you start ladling because you want to make sure that everything is in each jar, right? Put that right there for now. So we're gonna use the ladle and we're just gonna scoop it in. You're gonna leave about a half an inch at the top because this could expand in the freezer because it's liquid. So it's gonna expand and you need to allow for that room or you're gonna break your container. That looks good. I'm gonna set them off to the side and I'm gonna rinse, uh, wipe off the tops of the lids before I seal them. And you're gonna continue until you fill all the, res the jars that you have available, okay? So I'm filling the last jar now, a little tiny jar that I'm going to keep in my refrigerator here. So I got nine little jars of jam that I didn't have before and I'm just taking a nice wet paper towel and wiping off any sides that have sticky stuff as well as just around the lid so that it's easy to apply that lid. It's not all grody. Of course, the messier ones were the ones that I was unable to use that special little uh, funnel for, but you can freehand it and pretty well, it's all good. Okay, so I'm just gonna seal them. So now I'm ready with uh, eight new jars of grape jam. I won't have to buy jam for a while. And this is just one of the fruits that we do. We like to do a whole bunch of them. We've done strawberry this year. We like to do kiwi and peach and apricot and all kinds of different cool stuff. So that's how you do it. That's how you make freezer jam. And uh, you'll see that these separate because the grapes are floating to the top. You have a little bit of the sugar at the bottom. So when you're gonna use it again, make sure you stir it up before you use it. Um, if it's in your fridge, stir it up and uh, you're good to go. Anyhow, that's how you do it. That's how you make great freezer jam. I can't wait to try this on my toast in a little bit. When this uh, uh, thickens up nicely, I'm gonna put this one in my fridge and we'll see how awesome that is tomorrow with PB&J. That gives a whole new 
idea of the J. It's jam, grape jam, not the jelly. Anyhow, that's it. Follow me on Twitter at Cooking with Kim E with a capital E. I hope you like the fan page. It's facebook.com slash cooking with Kimberly. My shows are on ifood.tv slash cooking with Kimberly and youtube.com slash cooking with Kimberly.